And we're back, guys. Tennis in a minute. I'm your host, Good Energy. I give you the rundown on tennis coverage every single day. Quick picks, guys. Feeling a bit under the weather, so we're going to make this quick here. Uh, a few people asked me to do a video. 9 for 11 yesterday, right? That's uh, 80, over 80, 80%. Would have been perfect, but the two matches that uh, didn't come in, I didn't actually research them. Uh, so that's why that happened. But nonetheless, um, 9 for 11 is not too bad. Iga Swiatek, Carolyn Garcia. Look, the head-to-head is three to one for Iga. We all know when it matters the most, we see Carolyn Garcia play her best, uh, her best tennis. Uh, but I said before the United Cup started, Team Poland's on a mission. Iga's on a mission. I said last year. I mean, no one came to Iga's defense but me. They were hosed in that championship match, right? You fly that Polish team in the last, very last minute. They don't even have 24 hours to rest. They literally got in that same morning. I mean, that's horrible, guys, right? They weren't able to adjust to the court. We're going to take Iga to win this match. I think Carolyn Garcia, she's she's got a good serve. She's going to have to serve well, and she's going to have to get Iga to come forward. That's what Carolyn does, right? She loves to play vertical, and she goes in for the kill, short rally. She's going to have to play that way, but the problem is the longer the rallies, Carolyn Garcia, unlike the players that consistently beat Iga, she breaks down, right? So it's just it's just a bad bad recipe here. We'll take Iga Fiontech on the victory, and she's on a mission. But she's gonna have to serve well. I don't like the new serve; doesn't look good. We'll take Iga to win. Coco, she is taking on Emma Navarro. Uh, two Americans. This is gonna be a good match. I think Coco's overvalued here, but we're gonna see how Emma stacks up. Now Emma's a NCAA champion, University of Virginia. She's solid. She's got a good team she travels with, and I think she's got a good head on her shoulders. Um, Emma's, what, a few years older than Coco? Emma had a 61 season last year. She played very good, got her big break. She finds herself here after taking out uh, Favertova in the first round, Elena Evanesian, and Petra Martic last time out, but Coco's not Petra Martic, right? Coco's got the ability, the baseline. She's got a stronger backhand, much better serve, 128 miles per hour. She destroyed Vivara. I don't think Emma is that much ahead of Vivara in terms of game. Coco finds herself here after taking out Claire Lou. Brenda Favertova, little sister, and Vivara, she destroyed. So I like Coco to win this match. Next up, um, we have Svitolina, and she is taking on Wong. This is going to be a good matchup here. Now, Wong, I don't want to say she got lucky. She uh, managed to come back last time out against, uh, who did she play? Having a brain freeze. I want to say it was uh, Diane Perry, right? So Diane Perry was up a set, but with the weather, the pauses, the, the delays, that can mess up anyone's game. Wong finds herself here after taking out Jacqueline Christian, good baseliner. Her bestie, former doubles junior slam champion partner, Wong. And Diane Perry. Svitolina is here after taking like taking out Wozniaki, slam champion, and Baratikanu, slam champion. Marie Buskova, a defensive powerhouse. Now Wong has a good left down the line. Her serve can fail her at the worst possible times. Svitolina is a defensive powerhouse. I thought she looked a little heavy starting the tournament, but she's starting to play herself in shape. The longer the rallies, Wong's going to be in trouble. Wong can't hang in these rallies with Svitolina. But one thing Wong does has going for her, she's got a rocket that Svitolina might not be able to get under. But we'll take Svitolina to win. I think she's just too good. I mean, this is a match Svitolina if she's on her game. She shouldn't lose to Wong. Uh, Elena Rabakina taking out Linda Noskova. They played once last year. Um, I think that was at the was at the Indian Wells. Was was I mistaken there? I think they played at the Indian Wells. And uh Elena Rabakina won that in straight sets. Now, good win over Linda Noskova. The, uh, the ironic thing about that match, as I said, look, Noskova's not on my top 10 list because I think she beats all of them. So sure enough, they end up playing each other, uh, you know, Noskova and Marin Dreva. And of course, Noskova wins as the under. Now, I had two personal picks yesterday. I had Noskova on the upset money line and I had Nuria Diaz on the upset money line. I took them separate and then I parlayed them. Huge payday, small fortune. Uh, I like we're backing her to win. I think Linda's going to be gassed out. It's going to catch up with her. Um, but in terms of Linda, I mean, look, when the ball's in play, 
she's going to have her opportunities to hold, but I just think we're back in a serve in the short day yesterday against Potapova. She's going to have too much energy, and I think Noskova, she just looks fatigued. All right, next up, we have Arena Sabalenka and uh, Azarenka. Now, listen, guys. If you follow the channel, you know what Vika said about Sabalenka. And again, the funny thing is we have a matchup here that I was talking about recently. Uh, Azarenka said one time when asked in an interview, how did she feel about Sabalenka? She's like, look, I don't really know her, but, you know, uh, even though we're from the same country, she doesn't really know her. But she said she feels that her game is just, she's just not on her level. That's exactly what she said. She said, I you know she's a good player, but she's just not on my level. That's disrespectful. And since then, Arena Sabalenka has made it her point. Now, Sabalenka did win that match. She, uh, I'm sorry, Azarenka, after saying those things about Sabalenka, she beat her uh, in straight sets, and it was a bad blowout. And she did show that Sabalenka wasn't on her level. But since that interview, Sabalenka's won the last couple matches in blowout fashion. This is a match where the experts think that Sabalenka's going to blow out Azarenka. Now, listen, guys, Azarenka last night, she passed the test against Yelena Ostapenko. So it's not going to be, it's not like she's going to get a faster ball from Sabalenka, you know. The the problem is Sabalenka is comparable to a Yelena Ostapenko in terms of power, but she moves a lot better. And you can arguably say she serves better when she's not making double faults. But I'm going to go with the huge spread, guys. Uh, the alternate spread is ridiculous. I'll take the I'll take the seven and a half games Azarenka for the price of Sabalenka to win it. So that's a pick. I'll take Azarenka seven and a half. Those are the picks. Oh, we got one more. Nuria Diaz and Harriet Dart. Now this is probably the most uh, comparable matchup of all of them today. Now Dart owns a head to head, but uh, the last time these two played, I did a prediction in Grammy Canada, and I told you to take Nuria Diaz to get the victory there. Uh, pretty nice prediction video. I think. Diaz has beat the much better competition. Uh, I mean, she's took out Celine Naif, who's comparable to Dart. Raki Movo is comparable to Dart. Olsen Dodden and Tossin, her last two wins from Nuria, those are great servers with very powerful forehands. She's not going to have that type of pressure. So Nuria's this is probably going to be a relief match, but Dart does, the af does have the athletic ability. So it's going to be a different type of match. Whereas uh, Fritzum, Wong, Cabino, Valley Nets, those are the players that Dart has taken out to get here. Uh, I, I think all the values are Nuria Diaz. I think Nuria Diaz can win the match outright. I just think she's playing better. And um, the pick here is for the first set. I'll take Nuria Diaz plus two and a half games. That's the pick, guys. Enjoy all the picks. And uh, look, 9 for 11 yesterday. Not much value today. There are other tournaments, but I can't break those down. There's way too many. And uh, I'm going to get some rest. Tennis in a minute. We'll be back.